Good evening and welcome to the Cancer Education Series brought to you by Mercy One and Above and Beyond Cancer. My name is Chris Goodale and I'm the Executive Director of Above and Beyond Cancer and it is my pleasure to introduce our founder, Dr. Dick Deming, who will introduce our speaker for this evening. Dr. Deming? Hey, great. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And um, in this uh, COVID year of experimentation with Zoom, you're, uh, you're with us for a little bit of an experiment tonight. Dr. Uh, Batra, who is our speaker, uh, uh, Tandra Mohan Batra, who I'll introduce, uh, wasn't able to be with us live, so we pre-recorded his lecture, and uh, we'll be playing that recording along with his slides, but you won't be able to ask him questions. Uh, Chris and I will come back on at the end. Um, Dr. Batra, I'm really excited to, to hear his talk tonight on the metabolic aspects of cancer. Uh, Dr. Batra was born and raised in India. He practiced OBGYN for um, many years in, in coming to the United States, and then he trained in pediatrics and family medicine in the United States. He's also a certified functional medicine provider. He practices and teaches integrative and functional medicine to his medical students and residents. And I quote, um, I believe in a body's innate ability to heal. I try to investigate and treat the underlying cause of illness using functional medicine approach so that I can halt and possibly reverse the underlying disease process, end quote. So we're excited to have Dr. Batra and his talk on the metabolic aspects of cancer. And now through the magic of technology. <laughs> Good evening, I am uh, Dr. Batra. I am a family physician. I work at Mercy Hospital. Uh, I am a functional medicine and integrative medicine practitioner. Now, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of uh, Above and Beyond Cancer Group for providing me this opportunity. Uh, I am going to talk about uh, the metabolic approach to cancer. Uh, I don't have any conflict of interest to disclose. And my presentation is solely based on this book, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer by Dr. Nasha Winters. Uh, this book is about 350 page book and has many references and scientific uh, studies quoted to support what she is trying to say. So um, uh, without further ado, we will start this presentation. The uh, objective of my presentation is uh, uh, the, the, this to discuss the current uh, cancer crisis. We will also discuss the body terrains that initiate promote and spread cancer. Uh, we will also talk about the metabolic approaches that to improve outcomes of cancer treatments, reduce the side effects of chemotherapy and radiation therapy, and prevent recurrence of cancer. So what is the current crisis? Cancer directly affects half of US population. In 2015, more than 1.5 million new cancer cases were diagnosed, resulting in over half a million deaths. In 1960, breast cancer affected one in 20 women. And in 2016, the number rose to one in eight. Half of all men and, and over a third of all women in US will develop cancer in their lifetime. From 1973 to 1991, prostate cancer rates increased by 126%. One of the drawbacks of conventional cancer treatment is that they also slash, burn, and poison body's healthy cells. They also deplete the immune system, damage DNA, eradicate microbes in the gut, cause inflammation, and oxidative stress, all of which are cancer promoting factors. Long-term implications of these therapies can include increased gut permeability, impaired cardiovascular health, depressed cognitive health, impaired neurological function, debilitating neuropathy, destruction of immune cells, and even death. Cancer is the mitochondrial disease. 
related to a person's physiology, psychology, and ecology. Cancer is not a genetic disease, but instead a metabolic disorder that occurs in response to how we are feeding and treating our bodies and therefore our genomes. Only 5 to 10% of all cancers are caused by damaged DNA. These inherited mutations cause cancer only if mutations also alter mitochondrial function. About 90 to 95% of all cancers are caused by poor diet and unhealthy lifestyles that also damage mitochondrial function. We have the ability to influence gene expression and mitochondrial function through diet, lifestyle, and thoughts. So this is a very good news. So changes in the human diet and environment that have occurred only in the last 250 years are responsible for many human diseases, including cancer. These include air conditioning, airplanes, antibiotics, artificial food color, artificial sweeteners, cars, cell phones, chronic stress, computers, electric lighting, emulsifier, high fructose corn syrup, genetically modified foods, internet, pesticides, prescription medications, artificial preservatives, refined foods, sunscreen, synthetic chemicals, synthetic fats, television, toilet, vaccine, and much more. So these are the, the daily exposures of our life, and it is hard for us to escape from this. Please, one second, hold on. Please, we can record. So this is the, uh, the picture of the cell. As you can see, uh, in the center of the cell is uh, the, the nucleus, which is purple colored, which has uh, the DNA, which controls all the cell functions. Uh, you can also see uh, the yellow and uh, uh, orange shaped, football shaped uh, structures, which are called mitochondria. The damage to the mitochondria causes many diseases, including uh, cancer. So what is cancer? Cancer is defined as the uncontrolled division of abnormal cells and the spread of those cells throughout the body. Even healthy cells, healthy adults produce 500 to 1,000 cancer cells a day, but healthy immune surveillance system prevents them from manifesting. What is metabolism? Metabolism is a combination of physical and chemical processes that occur in the body to create the energy required to maintain life. If food is the body's gasoline, the mitochondria are the tiny engines responsible for converting that food into energy for the body to run on it. The root cause of cancer is the damaged mitochondria. So what are the hallmarks of cancer? So the cancer cells have certain peculiar characteristics. These include sustained proliferation. Cancer cells multiply out of control by creating proteins that encourage their explosive growth. They have insensitivity to anti-growth signals. Cancer cells disarm the processes the body uses to put the brakes on unwanted cell division. They also have evasion of apoptosis, that means also known as, known as cell suicide. Normal cells self-destruct when they detect the error that cannot be repaired, but cancer cells thrive despite these errors. They have limitless replicative potential. Normal cells die after a certain number of divisions. Conversely, cancer cells are immortal. They have sustained angiogenesis, that means development of blood supply. 
cancer cells are able to orchestrate the creation of blood vessels to supply them with oxygen and nutrients they need to grow. Ability to metastasize, cancer cells can spread to other sites in the body where space, oxygen, and nutrients are more plentiful. They have ability to reprogram energy metabolism known as Warburg effect. Cancer cells alter their method of energy production and increase their metabolic rate in order to sustain rapid growth. Avoidance of immune destruction. Cancer cells suppress the function of key Im immune cells, including natural killer cells, while also evading immune surveillance system. They have tumor promoting inflammation. Tumors activate an inflammatory response that can increase their access to growth factors and blood supply. Genome instability and mutation. Almost all cancer cells have defects in their ability to repair DNA, allowing the reproduction of mutated cells. Assessing the terrain, whether you aim to prevent cancer, have been recently diagnosed with it or are in remission, it is essential to assess the elements that could or did contribute to its development. The mechanisms governing cancer development are multifaceted and interconnected. There are 10 body terrains that influence progression of cancer, response to therapy, and therapy-associated side effects. And we will talk about each terrain in detail. Addressing only one of these 10 terrains will significantly enhance body's ability not only to respond to conventional therapies, and reduce the side effect from the treatment, but also make one stronger and better able to prevent cancer from occurring in first place. So these are the terrains that we'll be talking about. The first terrain is genetics and epigenetics, blood sugar balance, toxic burden, microbiome and digestive function, immune function, inflammation, blood circulation, and angiogenesis hormone balance, stress and biorhythms, mental and emotional health. We'll talk about the first terrain, genetics, epigenetics, and nutrigenomics. A gene is a segment of DNA that is inherited by a child from its parents. A mutation is a permanent alteration in the DNA sequence due to either the deletion or substitution of the part of the genetic code our genes can be flipped on or off depending on our exposure to certain environmental factors, including diet, lifestyle, and stress, which is also known as epigenetics. Nearly all cancer cells are basically abnormal cells with mutations that enable them to survive and reproduce better than all other normal cells because the checks and balances system to repair the DNA, also known as genome surveillance, is defective. Nutrigenomics is the study of interaction between the diet and genes. Certain dietary compounds, including folate, vitamin B12, tea, polyphenols, cruciferous vegetables, and more have anti-carcinogenic properties because of their relationship to DNA. Two of the most famous genes in the cancer, BRCA1 or BRCA2, also play central role in genetic repair and mitochondrial function. When either BRCA1 or BRCA2 is absent as the result of mutation, DNA repair complexes cannot form. Therefore, cells that are missing BRCA1 or BRCA2 become hypersensitive to damaging agents such as various chemical carcinogens found in our food and personal care products, which can potentially lead to cancer. Single nucleotide polymorphisms, also known as SNPs, are a type of genetic variation that is passed from parent to child. There are estimated 10 million SNPs in the human genome and they have 
profound effects from changing the individual's response to certain drugs to raising their susceptibility to environmental factors such as toxins, suppressing their ability to process hormones, affecting the way they metabolize food, and increasing their risk of depression and developing a disease. Certain SNPs can also affect the metabolism of fats, alcohol, caffeine, vitamin D, sulfur, or lactose. An estimated 50% of the population has inherited one copy of famous MTHFR SNP, which codes for the enzyme methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. MTHFR gene mutation increases the risk of breast, colon, and other cancers. This gene mutation slows down methylation process, which is essential for repair of damaged DNA body's ability to, to create antioxidant and impedes detoxification. Targeted therapy is a type of cancer treatment that literally targets the peculiarities of cancer cells that we already discussed earlier that make them different from healthy cells and help them grow, divide, and spread. However, one mutation, one target, one drug approach of current conventional chemotherapy is not working because the genome of a typical patient with cancer contains thousands of mutations. So what are the effects of diet on DNA? Some diet regulated genes play a role in the onset, incidence, progression, and or severity of disease. Macronutrients and micronutrients in the diet change the activity of enzymes that add methyl groups to DNA by a process called methylation, which helps to repair the damaged DNA. Certain phytonutrients such as green tea have the ability to repair DNA. Common dietary chemicals act on human genome either directly or indirectly and can alter gene expression or structure via several different mechanisms. For example, intake of elemental Selenium is considered the major epigenetic switch regulating BRCA mutation. Diet high in omega-6 fatty acids correlates to 40 times more DNA damage than one high in anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acid. Now let's talk about genetically modified food, which everybody is aware of. Since genetically modified food entered our food supply in 1990s, the number of new breast cancer cases have doubled. Active ingredient in herbicide Roundup glyphosate, which is sprayed while harvesting genetically modified grains, may be one of the most contributing factor in causation of several different types of cancer and high incidence of autoimmune conditions in recent times. Glyphosate exposure doubles the risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and increases the risk of multiple myeloma. Elimination of genetically modified food is a critical step toward improving metabolic terrain. Consume whole, organic, unprocessed foods whenever possible. This is the picture of the neem tree, the fruits and uh, leaves of this tree have um, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and anti-cancer property. And this uh, tree is native to, to India. Now let's talk about the second terrain, the blood sugar balance. Average American adults eats over 150 pounds of sugar annually. Cancer cells ingest sugar at a rate that is almost 50 times faster than healthy cells, and it is the main fuel that helps them grow and spread. Intermittent and chronically elevated blood sugar and insulin levels are the foundation for all progressive and recurrent cancers. No conventional treatment, including the newer targeted therapies, will affect the cancerous cells if sugar consumption remains high. Multiple adverse reactions are reported by P. 
people who consume artificial sweeteners, which is presented here in the slide. An increased metabolism of glucose promotes several hallmarks of cancer, including excessive proliferation of cancer cells, anti-apoptic signaling helps cancer cells remain immortal, cell cycle progression, and angiogenesis. High levels of sugar and insulin promote cancer-promoting pathways. High glucose levels inhibit the functioning of P53 protein, which is a tumor suppressing protein. Insulin stimulates the release of pro-inflammatory chemicals called cytokines from human fat cells, which inhibit immune cells while also causing production of insulin-like growth factor type 1, IGF-1, that promotes cancer growth and development of resistance to chemotherapeutic agents. How cancer cells gobble glucose, the Warburg effect. Cancer cells grow at a rapid rate and require substantial energy. Cancer cells express more insulin receptors on the surface, increasing their ability to uptake glucose faster than normal cells. This allows them to acquire more energy to grow. Cancer cells also produce lactic acid as a waste product into the surrounding environment, which attracts more blood vessels to the area, again supplying more glucose. One way to defeat the growth of cancer is to cut off the supply of glucose through ketogenic diet, which improves fatty acid, which provides fatty acid as the fuel to the body. Normal cells can reprogram their metabolic pathways and can use fatty acid as fuel. However, cancer cells can't adapt to this change, which limits their growth. So ketogenic diet can be practiced only under the supervision of a nutritional professional who is very familiar with this diet. And also this should be discussed with the oncologist before starting it. Ketogenic diet has many benefits, including it reduces angiogenesis, it restores normal cell apoptosis, it reduces tumor size over time, it reduces the level of insulin and IGF-1, it enhances the action of standard treatments such as chemotherapy and radiation while reducing common side effects. So this is the picture of a, a turkey trail mushroom, which is one of the medicinal mushroom, which has anti-cancer property. Now let's talk about the third terrain, which is the toxic burden. A carcinogen is any substance that can contribute to the process of cancer formation, including causing mutations and promoting tumor growth. Exposure to carcinogenic toxins causes mitochondrial damage, inflammation, oxidation, disrupts hormone balance, and suppresses the immune system. Since World War II, more than 80,000 new synthetic chemicals have entered commercial use. More than 20 million chemicals have been created. Most are not in direct commercial use, but the byproducts of their manufacture contaminate the air, the earth, and the water. Globally, a new chemical is synthesized on an average every 27 seconds. Less than 5% of chemicals have been tested for their safety and none have been tested for their synergistic effect. That means how they interact with one another. Some carcinogens may cause direct DNA damage or genetic mutations, while others may disrupt the liver's detoxification system. Where we can find these carcinogens? These carcinogens are prevalent everywhere in our life, including new cars, couches, lawn care products, baby pajamas, baby powder, laundry detergent, pesticide, dry cleaning chemicals, cookware, certain foods, food wrappers, arts and art, 
crafts supplies supplies building supplies thing drinking water perfume prescription medications and more at birth many newborns in the united states already have over 200 toxic chemicals in their bodies that entered via the mother's placenta we are exposed to heavy metals through our drinking water food supply and occupational exposures this can this can also cause genomic instability carcinogens can all can enter the body via absorption through skin inhalation through lungs ingestion through the digestive tract injection into the blood stream or immune exposure to the immediate surroundings how do carcinogens in initiate cancer so any carcinogens initiate cancer by several mechanisms as mentioned here they can induce dna damage they can induce oxidative stress and cause inflammation they can suppress immune system and they can also cause cell immortalization so what is a metabolic approach to reducing toxic burden so detoxification of the body is a multi step process whereby multiple organs mobilize utilize transform and eliminate the toxins liver is the primary waste treatment organ toxins are sent to liver sorted and processed according to the type toxins toxin infused bile then binds to the fiber and is excreted through the feces anyone who has sluggish gall bladder or has had gall bladder remo removed should optimize body's natural production of bile through the use of bile acids and bitter herbs detoxification in the, in the liver takes place in phase 1 and phase 2 during phase 1 detoxification toxic chemicals are either directly neutralized or transformed into intermediate often more toxic compounds phase 2 detoxification further transforms toxins into forms that are safe for excretion high quality and bio available proteins phytonutrients vitamins minerals are required to support both phase 1 and phase 2 detoxification processes implementing non toxic lifestyle is is to purge the kitchen bathroom laundry room and garage of all toxic products and replace them with natural ones avoid plastics perfumes new furniture exhaust fumes toxic cleaning products paints and solvents therapeutic fasting reduces body's toxic burden including toxic side effects of chemotherapy and activates the immune system infuse detox promoting foods into daily diet along with proper hydration exercise regularly and use saunas to promote elimination of toxins through sweating use enemas using warm water coffee or oils to promote removal of toxic minerals material through the bowel movement so this is the picture of uh, asian ginseng which is uh, very helpful for can anti cancer properties now let's talk about the next terrain microbiome the trillions of microbiome microbes that live within or on us can work either increase or decrease cancer susceptibility and progression bacteria are involved in regulating tumor cell proliferation inducing cancer cell apoptosis modulating inflammation training our entire immune system and influencing the metabolism of foods and pharmaceuticals they also have profound effect on genomic stability individual microbes outnumber human cells 10 to 1 and collectively weigh about 3 pounds beneficial bacteria in the gut help keep the pathogenic microbes and fungi in check imbalances in the composition of bacteria bacterial microbiota also known as dysbiosis are major factors in human illnesses including cancer autoimmune conditions obesity asthma autism colitis and mental disorders 
poor diet, antibiotics, sterile environments, and other threats to microbiome health can lead to overgrowth of harmful bacteria and depletion of good bacteria. The microbes role in health and cancer. Bacteria can change the DNA of human cells, which can lead to onset of cancer. More than 50% of xenobiotic hormone and toxin detoxification is facilitated by beneficial gut bacteria. Microbes are needed for digestion, absorption, and synthesis of many vitamins and foods, including vitamin B12, vitamin K, fiber, protein. They are also responsible for producing folate, which is critical for gene silencing. Gut microbes or a lack thereof can significantly affect the efficacy of certain cancer therapies. Tumor cells affect the composition of gut microbiota, which contributes to the development of cancer-related cachexia. Microbes train the immune system to recognize, respond, and react to foreign and self molecules, which is central to health and disease. So what are the threats to microbiome? The, the first one is caesarean delivery. The specific bacteria transferred from mother to, back, to baby when the baby is delivered via vaginal route, train the baby's immune system to distinguish between the what is friend or foe. This process programs the baby's immune system to protect the infant from disease for the entire lifetime. Infants born by C lack this ability and have an increased risk of developing asthma, allergies, and autoimmune disease in later childhood. Breastfeeding, breast milk is rich in living white cells, immunoglobulins, and oligosaccharides that feed beneficial bacteria in the gut. Breastfeeding has been associated with a host of positive outcomes ranging from fewer ear infections to a lower risk of leukemia. Formula milk contains high amount of inflammatory oils, cow's milk protein and sugar, and are devoid of immune complexes and microbes, which are beneficial. Overuse of antibiotics is also another concern for dysbiosis in the gut. Many cancer treatments do not respond unless gut microbiota is intact. Antibiotic use on the farm grew from 18 million pounds in 1999 to nearly 30 million pounds in 2011. Almost 80% of all antibiotics sold in the United States are used to increase growth in farm animals and are present in non-organic meats, eggs, milk, and cheese that we consume on a daily basis. In 2010, over 258 million courses of antibiotics were prescribed. Antibiotics not only cause oxidative damage to DNA, but also directly target the damaged mitochondria. Damage to the mitochondria is one of the root cause of cancer as we have discussed earlier. Overuse of antibiotics is causing the current emergent crisis of superbugs, DNA damage, autoimmune conditions, and cancer. Certain herbs like garlic, horseradish, and oregano offer alternative to antibiotics and support detoxification. They modulate inflammation, increase resistance to cancer and suppress growth of tumors. Another factor is the sterile environment. Modern life in hyper hygienic environment is responsible for the spikes in prevalence of childhood allergies, asthma and cancer. Triclosan is an antibacterial and antifungal agent widely used in many different products such as hand soap sanitizer, plastic kitchen tools, cutting boards, high chairs, pencils, deodorants, clothes, bedding, and other fabrics. When bacteria are exposed to triclosan for long periods of time, 
genetic mutations can arise. Triclosan promotes the growth of human breast cancer cells. Medication and chemotherapy. Anti-inflammatory medications, acid reducing drugs, chemotherapies can all damage gut microflora. There is profound disruption of intestinal microbiome known as gastrointestinal mucositis that is caused by chemotherapeutic agents. Therefore, probiotic during chemotherapy treatment is especially important. Now let us talk about the metabolic microbiome reboot plan. Because our micro, mitochondria are truly microbiome in nature, taking dietary measures to balance and repopulate our microbiome is one of the most powerful metabolic cancer deterrent. Fiber, both soluble and insoluble fibers are digested by the, by the mito, microbiota in the colon which makes certain byproducts like short chain fatty acids. These reduce the risk of colon cancer, prevent development of insulin resistance, and promote mitochondrial function. Prebiotics and probiotics. So prebiotics are nutritional compounds with the ability to promote the growth of gut bacteria. Probiotics are de defined as live organisms when taken in adequate amounts orally, may offer health benefits to the host. Prebiotics discourage growth of pathogenic bacteria, prevent constipation and diarrhea, and stabilize blood sugar levels. Supplements with pre and probiotic are recommended during chemotherapy or after a course of antibiotics. Top foods to support microbiome include leeks, Jerusalem artichokes, fermented, and cultured food, wild green asparagus, fermented fish, ume boshi vinegar, radishes, and black raspberries. So this is the frankincense uh, tree, which has been uh, used medicinally to treat many conditions, including cancer. Now let's talk about immune function. Cancer cells have an incredible capacity to disguise themselves, suppress immune functioning, and even recruit immune cells to play on their side. Our in immune system is overwhelmed due to exposure to escalated stress of modern life, widespread use of prescription medications, smoking, alcohol use, sedentary life, use of grains, lectins, and emulsifiers, artificial food dyes, chemotherapy, vaccination, sugar, microbiome eradication, and widespread nutrient depletion, creating an environment that is very hospitable to cancer. Immune surveillance confers constant protection against development of cancer. Several vitamins and minerals, including vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, selenium, and zinc are crucial for healthy immune function. The metabolic immune system reboot plan includes elimination diet or paleo type diet, which includes a grain free, sugar free, bean free and dairy free diet. Also include medicinal mushrooms like turkey trail, maitake, shaitake, reishi, lion's mane and cordyceps mushrooms. Forest bathing, uh, these contemplative walks or moving meditations through the woods are designed to reconnect people with nature and have been found to boost the immune system. Mistletoe is a herb which is uh, quite commonly used uh, during chemotherapy and radiation in, in Europe. It is known to reduce adverse side effects including anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, hepatic toxicity, nausea and vomiting. It also offers palliative support, improves quality of life, treats pain, reduces ascites, and increases survival. Mistletoe has many mechanisms through which it has anti-cancer properties, including anti-angiogenic, it inhibits cancer spread, it immunomodulates, it is anti-inflammatory, it enhances the quality of life. This can be administered subcutaneously intravenously or directly into the tumor. 
So this is the picture of the holy basil, which is a, um, improves uh, the detoxification function and also has an anti-cancer property. Now let's talk about the next terrain, inflammation and oxidation. Inflammation and oxidation form a vicious cycle that is the root cause of the development of cancer. Inflammation is considered cancer's primary precursor. Genetic damage is the match that lights the fire and inflammation is the gas that sustains it. Dietary factors are the primary contributors to inflammation, including processed fats, grains, and sugar, which include salad dressing, barbecue sauce, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, cottonseed oil, microwave meals, breads, chips, pizzas, french fries, cookies, ice cream, pastries, margarine, butter, replacers, and fast food. Inflammation stimulates the production of highly destructive free radicals called reactive oxygen species. When there is an imbalance between the amount of reactive oxidative species and the amount of antioxidants, which neutralize the effect of reactive oxidative species, the result is oxidative stress, which leads to genetic and mitochondrial damage and development of cancer. Cancer is called a wound that does not heal. So what are antioxidants? So phytochemicals are the compounds that occur naturally in plants. There are thousands of different phytochemicals and they give plants their color, odor, and flavor. These phytochemicals neutralize the damaging effect of free radicals on proteins, DNA, lipids, and mitochondria. Foods like berries, raw co coca, and pecans have high vitamin C, and are natural antioxidants. Chia seeds and almonds have high vitamin E. The antioxidants do not have a negative effect on the safety or efficacy of chemotherapeutic drugs. The anti antioxidants increase apoptosis or cell death of cancer cells, protect healthy cells, and reduce the side effect from chemotherapy. Cytotoxic Cytotoxic chemotherapy causes massive oxidative stress, leaving patients with severe deficits in antioxidants, which in turn promotes widespread inflammation. So antioxidants have the following anti-cancer benefits. They reduce inflammation, they modulate hormone, they reduce tumor cytotoxicity, they prevent angiogenesis, prevent chemotherapy side effects, induce apoptosis, inhibit metastasis, and support DNA methylation and epigenetics. So what is the metabolic approach to inflammation oxidation? The step one is add antioxidant and anti-inflammatory plants to the diet. Antioxidants are present in foods and beverages of plant origin, including fruits, vegetables, herbs, spices, nuts, olives, chocolate, tea, and wine. Two of the most potent antioxidant phytonutrients are quercetin and resveratrol. Add anti-inflammatory herbs, including black cumin seed oil, coriander, cumin, turmeric, ginger, cardamom, and balance your fatty acids. Avoid foods with high vegetable oils con content, such as mayonnaise, salad dressing, sauces, dips, and processed foods. Avoid fried foods, fast foods, margarine, candy, chips, commercial meat products, and baked foods. Increase consumption of omega-3 fatty acids. This is found in foods such as sardines, mackerel, herring, arctic char, wild salmon, chia seeds, walnuts, cold-pressed extra virgin oils, and dark leaf vegetables. Step four, greens and grass help inflammation pass. Kale, spinach, and wild grasses contain high amounts of fatty acids. Grass-fed animals contain six times more anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acids than grain-fed counterparts. So this is the picture of the turmeric, which has got anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer property. Now let's talk about blood circulation and angiogenesis. Blood vessels and lymphatics are the body's 
highway system which allow cancer cells to spread to distant body organs over 90% of cancer deaths are due to metastatic spread bone brain liver and lung provide most suitable micro environment for the metastatic cancer cells to grow cancer cells grow and spread outside their designate, designated area by developing ways to acquire more nutrients and oxygen by summoning new blood vessels or angiogenesis cancer cells become creative to develop hypoxia or low oxygen state which attracts more blood vessels hyperbaric oxygen therapy that is delivery of oxygen to the body under high pressure in a chamber saturates a tumor with oxygen which can reverse cancer promoting effects of tumor hypoxia the metabolic approach to prevent cancer growth and spread is avoid all dairy products certain gut bacteria convert beta casein derived from proteins from the milk into pro invasive factors that stimulate cancer cell invasion and mortality resveratrol from organic red grapes and wine and curcumin from turmeric suppress cancer cell proliferation inhibit growth signaling pathways induce apoptosis and inhibit angiogenesis other phytonutrients like grapefruit peels parsley cherry tomatoes chaga mushroom tea chili peppers aloe vera juice green tea chamomile ginseng suppress cancer growth and spread this is the picture of uh, the ashwagandha plant which helps to support uh, adrenal function and manage stress now let's talk about next terrain which is a hormonal balance hormones coordinate growth fertility immunity and metabolism as they naturally fluctuate throughout a lifetime estrogen initiates and promotes cancer growth by supporting angiogenesis causing inflammation and modulating metabolism of cancer cells breast and prostate cancer affect one in seven individuals in united states approximately 70% of breast cancers are sensitive to estrogen men who are overweight and are also prone to estrogen dominance and its associated symptoms including erectile dysfunction low libido and prostate cancer hormone replacement therapy being used in post menopausal women and oral birth control pills increase the risk of breast ovarian cervical endometrial liver and colorectal cancers various daily use products contain hormone disrupting chemicals also known as endocrine disruptors and these products include skin creams shaving cream bubble bath lotions perfumes lipsticks fingernail polishes shower gel makeups shampoos hair color deodorant bug spray household cleaning products toys clothes bottle fed water garden fertilizers as you can see it is very hard to escape from these toxic environment the hormones used in commercial animal production can make an animals grow up to 50% per faster beef raised in the united states contained 140 to 600 times more estrogen than japanese beef genetically engineered artificial hormone recombinant bovine growth hormone or rbgh induces gr greater milk production most non organic dairy products in the united states contain rbgh which increase the risk of breast prostate and colorectal cancers so balancing hormone with nutrition so avoid hormone disrupting products which i mentioned earlier in the slide eat healthy fats including pasture raised organic eggs to optimize cholesterol level promote detoxification of hormones with sauna and fasting consume cruciferous vegetables like cabbage cauliflower broccoli brussels sprouts which have powerful hormone modulating and chemoprotective properties flavonoids are phytochemical compounds found in chocolate which are high in 
cacao content. I know we all love chocolate. Onions, chives, kale, cranberries, romaine, lettuce, and turnip green reduce breast and pancreatic cancer risk. Kale contains a camp campherol, which helps to, re to reverse breast cancer resistance to several chemotherapy agents. Rosemary inactivates estrogen hormones and helps to helps de detoxification of estrogen and promotes excretion. Thyme has anti-cancer effects on liver, blood, skin, and uterine cancers. So this is the picture of the banyan tea, which is native to India. Now let's talk to the next terrain. We are almost coming to the end. Uh, stress is the most powerful carcinogen imaginable. It influences neurochemical, hormonal, digestive, inflammatory, and immunological functioning. And these changes influence the carcinogenic process. Exposure to toxins in diet and environment, a diet high in sugar and deficient in micronutrient and new minerals, promotes a state of chronic stress response in the body. Chronic stress causes insulin resistance, thereby causing high blood sugar levels, increasing the production of IGF-1 and inflammation and weakening the immune system. Metastasis is promoted when the body or the mind is stressed. Sleep. It is one of the very important topics that we must discuss. 60 million Americans report sleep problems such as insomnia or nighttime awakening. When we sleep, hormones are released, tissue growth and repair occurs, neurological pathways are regenerated, detoxification occurs, and the immune system is replenished. Sleep deprivation causes a decrease in satiety hormone, leptin, and an increase in hunger hormone, ghrelin. This stimulates the appetite and promotes weight gain. Ghrelin is associated with cancer progression. Melatonin is necessary for induction and maintenance of natural sleep. Inadequate exposure to natural daylight during the day and too much exposure to artificial light from TVs, computers, cell phones, and bright indoor lights depress the level of melatonin. Melatonin triggers tumor suppressor genes, tumor angiogenesis, and works as a powerful anti-carcinogenic antioxidant. Women exposed to artificial light during nighttime hours experience highest level of breast cancer. Melatonin alone or in combination with chemotherapy in high doses improves tumor regression and reduces the side effects. The metabolic approach to stress reduction and biorhythm restoration includes, we need to start living in close harmony with the natural world on physical, mental, and mental and, and moral planes. Uh, Gaia theory states that humans interact with our organic surroundings on, uh, on earth to form a self-regulating complex system that contributes to maintaining optimal conditions for the life on the planet. Stress increases the production of cortisol from the adrenal gland, which induces fight or flight response. Cortisol regulates blood sugar levels, fat, protein, and carbohydrate metabolism needed to maintain healthy blood glucose levels, immune responses, inflammatory action, blood pressure regulation, heart and blood vessel tone, and central nervous system activation. So key adrenal nutrients include vitamin C, E, and magnesium. Parsley, Irish moss, seaweed, purslane, and borage are rich sources of vitamin C. Vitamin E is found in sunflower seeds, turnip, mustard green, almonds, and pecan. Magnesium is, a white, is vital for the adrenal gland function. Clams, Swiss chard, Coca powder, sunflower, and sesame seeds are rich sources. Always try to get these micronutrients from the real food rather than medication. Adaptogenic herbs helps to provide resistance to stress. 
Several herbs are adaptogenous, including ginseng, rhodiola, holy basil, ashwagandha, and licorice root. This is the picture of maitake mushroom, which is also having anti-cancer properties. The last terrain, the mental and emotional health. Second to food, emotions and thought patterns are primary epigenetic modifiers. Our mind really can change our matter for better or worse. We can harness the power of positive thinking to improve our response to treatments or even achieve the spontaneous re regression or remission that occurs in over 20% of all cancer patients without therapy. Cancer is a turning point in the life that indicates that there is often a significant trigger or final blow to the system that precedes the diagnosis often occurring six months to two years earlier. The type C personality is associated with cancer and this includes being overly conscientious or super responsible, carrying others' burdens, wanting to please other people, needing approval, internalizing toxic emotions such as anger, resentment and hostility, difficulty expressing emotions, having a low threshold for stress. How can we prevent effects of type C personality? We can do this by expressing one's, one's emotions, finding meaning and purpose of life, being assertive, developing support system, being authentic. The tools to improve mental and emotional health include meditation, yoga, tai chi, qigong, journaling, prayers, exercise, connecting with nature. I thank you all for listening. I hope uh, you had found some uh, useful information in your journey. All the best. Thank you. Hey, Chris. Hey. So, um, hi everybody. That was a, a very thorough review of uh, uh, functional medicine principles. Um, you know, most of us could uh, tick off that uh, cigarette smoking uh, uh, leads to cancer, but most of us don't think about some of the other aspects of our daily life that can affect both uh, positively and adversely uh, cancer. So, a, a lot of information to uh, to uh, consider both when we're looking at how to live a healthy lifestyle to uh, avoid contact with uh, substances that are negative and also how we might use the natural world and especially herbs and nutritions and healthy living to help support a healthy lifestyle and have the best possible outcome with cancer. So many of these uh, topics we've explored before, and we will go into depth and on some of these in the future. Uh, Chris, were there any um, questions in the chat box this evening? No, <clears throat> there were no, none this evening, no. Okay, well, uh, thank you everybody for attending. Thanks, Chris, for uh, learning some new IT tools <laughs> and uh, yeah. we're, we're we're, we're getting better as we go on. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. All right. Thank, take care, everyone.